My name is Lee Sims. I'm the CEO of Covera. And a lot of people ask me, how do we come up with the name Covera? Well, Covera comes from two words. One is Q, for question, and the query. And the other is Vera, is Latin for truth. And what we like to say that we do, this is our core competency, is discovering the truth behind the question, Covera. The one thing that Covera does very well is that we partner with businesses to bring their data together and helping them make informed business decisions. That goes into everything from software engineering, graphic development, web application, full cycle, full software development. And it's actually going to what we do best, discovering the truth behind the question and helping them to perform detailed analytics and give them visualization. And even though we started this year, it actually you know, brings those, those 100 years of experience to, to fruition. So as far as Cambridge, we just came to Cambridge. We actually have an office right now in Columbia, which is our head business development office for the serving the Intel community, the federal community, and things of that nature. But we really want to come over here and be a partner for Dorchester County. One of the things that intrigued us is really trying to figure out how we can partner with the Dorchester Technology Center to use the interns that are coming out of that to help them to shape things that are going on, working on the real experience, real world things with graphic development, marketing campaigns, website development, and doing some share point to where it's actually a mutually beneficial environment. So we were very excited to be here in Dorchester County and Covera is not about jobs, right? The Covera is really about careers. How do we help shape people within their careers? How do we build people for their careers? And one of the things that we like to strive to do is that we're a partner with everything that we do. We're a partner with our customers and we're a partner with our employees. So how that works with our interns in Cambridge is that we want to partner within their success. You know, we want to build on top of the things that they're learning in their high school and figure out how do you apply that in this, this world for IT consulting and software engineering and things of that nature. So we want a solid base to build from to where we bring the energy, bring the drive, bring the fresh ideas and the fresh perspectives so we can build on top of that, which actually works out to be mutually beneficial for Covera and the community as well as the students. Dorchester County is awesome and we are very excited to be here. One of, the top three, um, one of the top three things that we love about Dorchester County is the economic development. They're really striving to progress this county to leaps and bounds, taking us to a whole other um, um, direction, making sure that they're partnering with businesses that are here and helping them to, to build the businesses that are here, as well as bringing in new businesses into the county, you know, specializing in different things, such as IT and software engineering and things of that nature. One of the things I'm very excited about with Dorchester County, and they're doing a phenomenal job with, is building that economic development center for the incubator. They're building a technology incubator, which we just signed a lease for, and we are so anxious to be part of that. But we love the direction of Dorchester County. We love the direction that the Economic Development Office is taking us. And we have to take our hats off to the things that they're doing over here. And there's a lot of things I can say about Dorchester County and why I be a part of this community, which is a thriving uh, county, a thriving community. But we're really interested in partnering with the high school. We want to be part of the Technology Center. We want to be part of the internship program that we're doing with these students. And one thing I want to say is that Covera is not just here to be an everyday business. We want to be a partner in this community, we want to be a partner with this county, and we want to be a partner in the schools to make sure that everybody's successful, that the county's successful and Covera is successful at the same time. So that's why we're here at Dorchester County. My name is Wayne Cole, and I'm CFO and co-owner of Wind Transport Incorporated in Herlock, Maryland. We are a transportation um, brokerage company, fully licensed by the federal government. Um, we uh, specialize in frozen seafood and frozen food deliveries. Uh, we specialize in less than truckload deliveries, but we also have a division that handles full truckloads. We're in the midshore, what we would call the midshore, which is kind of like accessible to um, you know, the mid-Atlantic area because our major pickup points are the New England area, the mid-Atlantic areas on the East Coast. So you know, being here in central location really uh, helps us a lot. We are continually growing. Um, so we anticipate um, adding more employees and adding more space in the future. I think the most rewarding part is uh, being able to hire local people um, and watching them develop in the industry, um, working with companies all over the United States. It, you know, it definitely puts money back in the, lo the local economy, um, not only with our employees, but with also with the, the trucks we contract, the, uh, the outside vendors that we have partnered with as far as the business partnerships in Dorchester County. Uh, definitely has a positive economic impact. I think business assets, uh, I think number one would be the rich history in agriculture. 
Um, if you travel around uh, Dorchester County a lot, you see that um, there's a rich history in agriculture, a lot of century farms, um, a lot of people that's dedicated to the farming industry uh, put their pr properties in um, pre uh, preservation um, so that those farms will be farms for a long time. I think number two probably would be the water and the waterways where people make their living, they recre recreate on the rivers. Uh, just I think that's a big part of the county. And then I think the, the last is the economic development piece that, that the county has been able to do. It seems like that when they lose large companies or large employers are able to band together with the leadership and the Economic Development Commission and get businesses to come in to fill those jobs. So I think that's the third asset. I think as far as lifestyle asset, probably the first would be affordability. I think it is affordable to live in Dorchester County. I think it's, I, I know it's affordable for us to have a business in Dorchester County, so I think it's affordable. Again, I think the, the, the access to the water and the waterways and the bay, I mean, for recreation purposes, is another uh, lifestyle asset. And I think that probably the third would be the history, the rich history that's here, um, you know, with the Underground Railroad and stuff like that, the terrific historic um, markers that are here. So yeah, I think that would be another one. It's, it, it's, it's just a nice thing to do. I mean, something you always dream about, um, starting your own business and, and making it happen in a location and hiring local people and seeing those local people develop and put money back into the local economy. Something that you always dream about doing. My name is Chris Brohan, our business is Real Revival Brewing, and my title is co-owner. My name is JT Merriweather. Um, I am the co-owner of Real Revival Brewing here in Dorchester County. Our company is a microbrewery. Um, we started last August. We just started brewing this past March. Um, we have a tap room attached to our brewery as well, so our business is a tap room, and then um, we're just getting into distribution as well. We had talked about brewing before we actually started home brewing, so we had interest in craft beer, obviously. We started with a Mr. Beer kit, and it turned out awesome. Um, really good, in fact, and we were like, oh, well, this is a breeze, you know, how hard can this stuff be? And then we did a little bit more research, and uh, we got the, our nice advanced homebrew system. We just kept brewing and kept practicing and just getting really good at it, and the whole time, uh, the whole time we, the bigger idea was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could get really good at this and make our own business? How cool would it be to own a brewery? We just homebrewed, learned, 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 and then it got to the point where we realized all our friends kept showing up at our houses when the beer was ready to drink. I'm like, oh, plenty of people here to drink this, and a couple of guys said, you know, you could sell this, and you know, Chris and I would like wink at each other, like, yeah, and we know we could. Our main reason we we love it here. We we're born and raised in Dorchester, um, but not to say we weren't scared. Um, we're coming from Dorchester County, who's a, a big fan of your Bud Light, your Mills, Miller Light, Coors Light, etc. Um, and we honestly thought that the majority of our customer base would be outside of Dorchester, but it's been the exact opposite. I mean, these guys have just embraced us and been over backwards for us. And honestly, whenever we need anything, it's, I'm, I'm, you know, 100 people stepping up to help us solve that issue. So Dorchester is amazing. It's amazing being able to work for yourself and support yourself um, and at the same time doing something you love. I mean, we're blessed. It's, it's unreal. One of the key things that we wanted to do was, I mean, we knew we were going to be, you know, we're here in Dorchester County. We were born and raised here, and, and, and we wanted people to feel the same amount of pride that we had for our beer. We wanted people to share in that pride. Um, and when people are, are proud of something, um, they, they start becoming brand loyal. And when this is, this is where my, I guess, the, the little genius bit of marketing we had is, you know, if we can breed brand loyalty, you know, preference goes out the window. So I think we've created this, this, um, this raw following, if you will, and we named our beer strategically after, you know, Nanticoke uh, Nectar is named after the Nanticoke River, which um, cuts between Dorchester and um, Wicomico counties. Um, named after the local Indian tribe that used to run around these parts. Um, the Bucktown Browns named after a little old farming community that's got a lot of history that deals with everything from Harriet Tubman to the Underground Railroad, so lots of cool historical implications there. Strategically, Dorchester County has got it's got a great position. I mean we're the heart of the of the state as they as they say. The people are amazing. It's Cambridge is, is special because of the location. I mean obviously it's it's gorgeous. We're right on the water. Um, the people here are amazing and we're centrally located to so much stuff. We're so close to Baltimore, we're so close to DC, we're so close to Philly. We get so much traffic going through, going to the beaches, the resort towns and whatnot. And we've also, because of the height, become a resort town ourselves. So we get a lot of out-of-towners. Um, this past weekend we were 
I, I, I'd venture to say 50% of the people were, you know, Annapolis, Baltimore, D.C., Pennsylvania even. So, it's, it's awesome. My name is Ricky Fitchu. My title is President of Hooper's Island Oyster Aquaculture Company. My name is Johnny Shockley. My business is Oyster Aquaculture and my title is Vice President of the company. We've been in Dorchester County since 2010. Uh, we're a farm-raised aquaculture company that raises oysters, tried to transition from the traditional dredging and hand tonging style to the more sustainable uh, farm-raised aquaculture oysters. We have a unique system and a wet storage system. There's only three in the country and we're held, held below federal regulations, so it's one of the safest seafood products you can consume. Ricky and I um, are both um, lifetime in, in the seafood industry, me into the harvesting, um, lifetime waterman of Chesapeake Bay, and Ricky more into the buying and selling, wholesaling of the, of the uh, different uh, fisheries and, uh, and fish that we have caught, we caught uh, traditionally. Um, I, uh, about five years ago, decided to uh, look in other ways and more sustainable and um, uh, stable types of business but wanted to stay attached to the bay, um, and that's about the time that uh, the state of Maryland declared that we were going into oyster aquaculture and that we were going to lease bottom. Um, at that point in time, Ricky and I decided to uh, test the waters to see if the oysters would actually grow in the ways that the scientific, uh, the science communities were saying that they would, and we tested um, the waters for that and found that it was very, uh, did, they did very well, so we decided to start a company um, that would support a brand new industry and to um, direct um, the seafood industry associated with oysters in a new direction on the Chesapeake. The most rewarding part of the job is when you go to a restaurant and you see your product on the menu, you know all the hard work and effort you put into getting it to that far and when you're sitting there and you hear someone else at another table order your product. I get a lot out of just my day to day watching the oysters grow helping other individuals get started in the industry and seeing their excitement. Um, I'm very excited about um, creating um, curriculum around teaching oyster aquaculture in the county public schools and also um, seeing it on the plate in a very fine restaurant or seeing it on the menu is uh, rewarding for me. I'm in businesses in other parts of the state, but I think one of the big things here is the help you receive from like the Chamber of Commerce, Maryland Economic Development, what they do to help startup companies get started and guide them through the tough times at the beginning. And also the hospitality here is great, uh, the relationships you develop that help you get through the tough times. Yeah, I mean, to me it's, um, I, would, I would not want to be anywhere else in the world or doing anything else than what I'm doing today. Um, I think it's extremely important to um, be, be able to figure out a way to celebrate what our forefathers have founded. And um, in, any way, in anything, that no matter where you are in the world, uh, we have to continue, um, it's our responsibility, this generation's responsibility to um, create sustainability in, uh, in, all, in all sorts of ways. My name is Chris Levine, Director of Sales and Marketing here at the Hyatt Regency Chesapeake Bay Golf Resort Spa and Marina. The Hyatt Regency Chesapeake Bay Golf Resort Spa and Marina is a 400 room resort uh, built for companies, built for government entities, built for associations, built for families, built for the corporate traveler. We have acres of land here with, that has a beautiful 18 hole golf course on it a world-class spa and a ton of meeting space for people to enjoy as well. We provide authentic hospitality here at the Hyatt and we welcome all, all businesses to come in, have their meetings, enjoy one or two days pre or post and bring their families if they would like. Here at the Hyatt we try to make everybody feel comfortable whether you're here on business and in meetings pretty much all day or if you're a family traveler and using our pools, golf courses and spas we really want to make sure everybody's comfortable. So if you're here on business and you're in meetings all day, you will have the opportunity to go out and walk our shell paths along the Chop Tank River. Or if you're here with families, you'll be able to enjoy the pool all day, maybe get in around a golf or go to the spa. We also offer Camp Hyatt as well. So if you need a few hours, uh, just alone time, we can take care of your children for you. We're also pet friendly, so whether you're here on conferences or here with the family, you can bring your four-legged friends as well. 
We opened our doors here August 29th, 2002. A lot of our opening team still works here. They still work here. So from groundbreaking to where we are now, 12 years later, they're still here and they're still working hard. Here at the Hyatt, we employ roughly 500 employees here, a lot from Dorchester County, which we're very proud of. The most rewarding part of my job is twofold. Number one, as a director, I love to see my team and the hotel's team grow. Promote from within is huge within Hyatt's core values. The other part of my job that I very much enjoy is seeing the family, seeing the companies coming in and in getting what they want out of why they're here getting the purpose of why they're here, whether it's relaxation, whether it's a company incentive trip, whether it's a planning trip or something that new rolling out in the company, that's what I enjoy the most. Dorchester County's top three business and lifestyle assets, I guess in order, would be the authentic people here. Like I said before, we employ hundreds of Dorchester County residents and the the pride that they take in their job uh, every day that they come to work with a positive attitude can't be found in many other counties so we're very proud of that and they are pr very proud people. The second asset I would say is the access to the waterways here both for industry and for, for enjoyment. Uh, there are many spin-off industries that live and breathe on the water and I think the access that we have here is second to none. The third I believe really is our proximity to major metropolitan areas and you know Highway 50, whether it's DC, Baltimore, New York, Philadelphia, that drive market keeps our hotel running at the occupancy that we do and helps Main Street and other entities within Dorchester keep their doors open as well. My name is Tom Powley and I'm president of GKD USA. GKD is a technical weaving mill of metal and synthetic meshes used in industrial and architectural applications. The company consists of three divisions. Our filtration division is providing filtration media and elements for industries such as oil exploration and aerospace. Our process conveyor belt division is providing conveyor belts for applications such as mining, um, food applications. The architectural division is weaving metal fabrics for architecture for applications such as solar shading, wall cladding, and transparent media facades. GKD USA is the U.S. division of a German company. The German company was originally founded in 1925. I started with GKD in 1994, moving to our U.S. headquarters then in Florida. In 1997, we moved that facility to Cambridge, starting with three employees. We're now up to 60 employees, with the German parent company employing over 650. The most rewarding part of my job is satisfying customers through the supply of well-designed and high-quality products while providing meaningful employment for our community. The top three business and lifestyle assets of Dorchester County, first two revolve around water. Number one, the beautiful landscape. Number two, the recreational opportunities that the water provides. Third, we we'll say the proximity to major cities and transportation hubs while still living in a rural setting. Born and raised in Dorchester County and traveling internationally, I have to say I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in the world. I moved away for two years and eventually came back and opened a business here. Um, if I'm a corporation considering relocating, why would I be here? Simply for quality of life. The water, um, friendliness, the integrity of the people, that's why you should be in Dorchester County. My name is Mickey Love and my business is the Dorchester Center for the Arts and I am the Executive Director. Our organization started in 1970. It was started by three local artists and we began in a small century home that had 2,200 square feet and then in 2008 we moved into a 7,500 square foot facility, a much larger facility. This year we opened the second floor of that facility and it's a performance hall, a performance venue and we'll be celebrating 45 years in 2015, so we have a lot of things going on. We're trying to present as many art opportunities as we can, whether it's classes or a gallery exhibits or an artisan's gift shop or uh, theater concerts. We're really trying to be a place to bring people together. The nice thing about being in Cambridge is that we're in the Arts and Entertainment District, so there's not just us. There are multiple galleries here and, and multiple restaurants and entertainment venues that people don't really expect to find in a small town, but it's definitely here. And by being in A&E District, there are benefits to uh, businesses who, who establish in that area. Some they can get some tax breaks. There are benefits to artists who work in that area and sell, uh, so that it helps them out in that way. And another thing that people don't always realize is that 
arts are an economic engine to an area. If it has a thriving arts community, it has a thriving business community. One of the uh, number one tourist attractions in the United States is Broadway because people come to Broadway and then they go to the shows and they see the town. And that's what we were able to offer here is there's so much going on that if you come to an event, there are restaurants to go to. And if you live here, there are plenty of things to do. Try to find a weekend that isn't booked with something happening in Cambridge. The most rewarding part of my job has to do with our slogan that we have, creating community through the arts. We are really about bringing people together of all socioeconomic backgrounds, all races, all viewpoints, and we want to experience all types of art. So we want to bring people together, and the arts can do that. And one of the special things that I like is that I see not only with children but adults is when someone comes in and does an art activity. We do summer camps for kids and the child gets so excited about what they've done and what they've accomplished and, and the joy in their face. I see that same joy in the 72 year old retiree who's taking a painting class for this first time. I mean we are bringing quality of life to this area. Uh, we talk about you know arts isn't just fluff. You know, art is life, it's the color of life. The advantage of having an arts and entertainment district in Dorchester County is that we are rich with art activities, but it's not just that. We're also located in a county that has tremendous historic uh, happenings going on, so you can get cultural experiences, historical experiences, you can enjoy the beautiful environment, people love being here, uh, the, the area inspires artists. Uh, I usually say you can't throw a rock in Dorchester County and not hit an artist because there's just so many people who live here that it's just so beautiful that it inspires them to create photos, write stories, paint paintings, write songs. I mean, it is an area that inspires. So if you're an outdoor enthusiast, you have the water to enjoy and do the activities, kayaking, boating, or whatever. Uh, and if, but if you like the arts, you get that balance. So it, we've got the best of both worlds here.